go. Okay, so I've started the recording and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tell everybody one more time before we get started, go ahead and introduce yourself. Please give us your name in the text where you're hailing from and if you're affiliated with any organization. And if you already know that you are dedicated to becoming a better storyteller, do you want to be connected with others um, in an ongoing way? All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on just a second and we'll get this the right place. Here we go. Can everybody see that okay? Let's see. All right, how's that? Can you see that okay? Thumbs up. All right, so while I'm sharing, I will not be able to see your text, but what I do want you to do, because we only have an hour together today, we wanna to keep on time. We can go a little bit over if it's stuff you guys wanna talk about, but I do not wanna go over on my time. So what I'm gonna to say to you is if you have a question, I'm not gonna be stopping to answer it during the presentation, but I would like you to not forget it. So please make sure that you go ahead and text it in there for me or jot it down so that we can we can um, make sure that we get to it. And I'm not sure why my, why my screen is not wanting to go full screen here. Let's see. I see it, there we go. All right, so let's get going. Welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. I wanna start off and just say thank you for being here. You may be somebody who was actually in a crash yourself, somebody who has been hit and injured, a family member may have been, or you might be an advocate, but whoever you are, we are really appreciating the fact that you're taking your time to be with us here today. So thank you so much. It really touches my heart. I've been involved in this work for about 12 years, and they're really, there's no better people in the world than people that are advocating for safe streets. So thank you so much. So as we get started, I wanna introduce, whoops, we're gonna go back here a little bit. It's decided it's very sensitive on me today. Okay, all right, let's try this again. One more time. So we've got Trini here and she is um, from It Could Be Me. Applause, applause. And um, I want you to take a few minutes for those of us here who don't know you yet, who you are, who your organization is, and why you're such a uh, so passionate about this important topic. So hi, everybody. My name is Trini Willerton, and I am the founder of It Could Be Me. And I started It Could Be Me after being hit by a careless driver in 2018. Um, I've had the fortune to be able to take part of several efforts to change policy, to just really incredible opportunities that um, that I've had to, to make change. And I love to share that with everybody. And our organization has grown to become a 501c3. That happened in 2019. And we have some people on the board that are just fabulous and that guide me and that help us um, just become a better organization every day. And yeah, our goal is just to make streets safe for everybody. We believe that everybody has the right to be out there and that getting home should not be optional. I mean, we should all be able to get home and do it safely. So this is part of, um, like Melissa said, it's a year effort, and it's part of our commitment to the National Roadway Safety Strategy. We are official allies, and this is one of the three efforts that we are in combined effort with um, USDOT. So thanks so much, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see everybody here. I'm honored to be teaching this and to have everybody here with you. So I did share with you all a little bit about myself in the email newsletter. I don't wanna make this about me. This is really about you. So I just want you to know that I've been at this for over a decade and I, I wear a really funny little hat in uh, biking, walking and transit advocacy of being passionate about storytelling. And the 
teaching of storytelling in a step-by-step -step way. So storytelling has become a buzzword, but just how the heck do you do it is something that people don't know. And I am passionate about it because I, I was telling Trini on the phone, I'm not naturally a gifted storyteller. I am a very good writer, but I am married to a very good storyteller. And so I realized that I really needed to dig in, get my hands in the clay and learn how to break this down for everybody else who was like me who wanted to become good at it. And also I wanted to share with you that though I have been very lucky in my life uh, of being car free for many years uh, before I moved to the Pacific Northwest, I was never hit when I lived there. I was hit uh, riding a moped when I lived in Italy. However, I do deal with complex trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder. And so we're going to we're going to delve into that a little bit because that's something that a lot of you might be dealing with. And we want to make sure that we honor that and we recognize where people are. So here's our check-in. And I want you to take a minute and think about where you are. If you are a victim or survivor of a crash, you might be in a place where you're curious but fragile right? You're still kind of like, you're not sure if you're ready to share your story. You feel like you might want to, but you're not sure if you're there yet. You might be ready to craft your story, or you might be way ahead of us all, and you might be ready to just go ahead and polish it. So if you would just take a minute and put in the text right now for me, where are you? And if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. But if you do feel comfortable, because there are other people just like you, go ahead and share where you are. And just just own it because wherever you are, that's the right place to be. And as we start today, I wanna to make sure that you understand that for us and everybody who works with me at Petal Love, your mental health and well-being are number one. So we are recording this and Trini is gonna make it available later. So if any time we hit something that is triggering for you and you are just not ready, you, you intellectually may wanna hear it, but you're emotionally not ready for it and you need to bow out, Go ahead. There's no, there's no right thing here. We just want you to feel safe and comfortable in creating a storytelling atmosphere that works for you. And if you're here as an advocate, as and I know some of you are who haven't been involved in a crash yourself, here's what I'm going to ask you to do as we move forward throughout this year. I'm going to ask you to get your hands in the clay and tell a story that makes you feel vulnerable. So. You may not have your own crash story, but I bet you have a story that's something embarrassing from high school or college or in your career or some other place that you are like, oh, you want me to talk about that? Yes, I want you to put your hands in the clay and learn how to be a storyteller who tells vulnerable stories because you cannot help other people tell their stories unless you can really put yourself in their shoes. And a caveat, if you're somebody who has been hit and you're like, I'm not ready to tell that story, but I really want to become a better storyteller, go ahead and pick a different story where you were vulnerable, but you're not so as close to it. So it's still going to teach you the craft of it. And again, we want to create a really vibrant, interesting, but supportive storytelling culture for you to be a part of. So for me, after a few years of delving into trauma and people that are on healing journeys, so I'm not an expert on trauma, but I've been studying trauma. This is what I have come to believe, that there's two stages to getting stories ready for advocacy. The first stage is that if you are a victim or survivor, you need to be in a supportive, informed community of people who've been in like experiences, and if possible with trauma-informed experts, somehow a part of that. Then, only when you feel ready is it time for you to move into a place where your story can be crafted and put to strategic use. But what we want to avoid, if at all possible, is for you to be re-traumatized by telling your story. Because when you get into advocacy, you're going to learn that you've got to tell the story again and again and again. And we want it to energize you and not have you be in bed for a week because you told it. So effective stories for advocacy they have purpose, they have a specific structure, and they have a strategy. And that's different than an anecdote. 
So what do I mean when I say story? Because story means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Story is a very specific thing. And this is a, a quote that I found on Mind Handle that worked really well for it. So most of us think a story is when we tell somebody, guess what happened to me today? That is not a story in, in, as I mean it. I mean a story in a formal way that has been crafted and shaped and for advocacy is strategic. So stories that are shaped like this are the ones that are really effective. Some of us are pretty good anecdote tellers and we illustrate lessons we wanna teach others by what happened to us, but most of us aren't. Most of us are just not that disciplined and we just wanna share an anecdote and call it a story. So whenever you hear me talk about a story, I'm talking about this more formal shaped strategic piece of communications. And I have a really good reason why I'm so dogmatic about this. So we want stories to change the world. We have a huge culture shift in front of us that is faster, bigger cars that are terrifying, that can cause so much harm. And we have to get our country and our world over this speed freak, this gigantic car culture where you can't see anybody outside of your car. And we've been seduced by the storytelling of the auto industry, right? Who have a lot of money and a lot of captivating ways that they tell the story. And now we have to learn how to become charismatic, influential, memorable storytellers to combat that. And this is Neil Gaiman, who is one of the most successful fantasy writers in the world and you may know his work even if you don't read fantasy because he's also the darling of Netflix and Sandman and God's uh, uh, Good Omens and Gods and Monsters and all, lot, American Gods, excuse me, are his shows. So he's really talented. We want to tell stories where somebody gets to change their mind. That's why we're here, isn't it? So how do you like to share stories? I want you to go ahead and text in the box right now. I can't see it, but the others can. And I want you to start thinking about how you consume stories and enjoy them the most, because I want you to become a story sleuth at the end of this. The most important thing as you leave this this evening and go through your Friday and your weekend is for you to start thinking of stories differently. I want you to start, when you start consuming stories, I want you to recognize that you're doing it. So do you love to read books? Do you love to watch movies at home on TV or go out to the theater? Or do you love podcasts and audiobooks? And as you think about that, think about where your talents as a storyteller might lie. Because you might say, I don't ever want to be in person telling a story, but you know what? I've got a pretty good voice. Maybe I could do audio narration. So however you love stories might give you a clue about how you might be a great storyteller. Now I want you to put in the text box. Let's just take a minute here. I'm going to I'm going to time us. And I want you to think about a story that changed your world. This is a story that comes quickly to mind. You might have been a child, you might have been an adult. It could have been last week, it could have been a decade ago, but it changed your world. It changed the way you see things because you saw that story. You watched that story, you heard that story, you read that story. And the story that came to mind for me is really funny. As a child of the 70s, I remember seeing Soylent Green on television. <laughs> that really terrified me. And the weird thing is, I think it's supposed to be about this year, 2023, and climate change. We do not have quite the disasters they had in that movie, but it is scary in how much it predicted things. So take a minute now. And if you haven't done so already, text with everybody, share what a story is that actually changed your world and how you see things. And, and think about the fact that it could have been a book that you read when you were 10. So what is a story that changed your world? And think about the power of that, that a story that you heard as a young person or recently flipped an opinion you had about something or made you stand in somebody else's shoes or 
helped you understand something that somebody was trying to get you to, to understand, but you couldn't until you heard the story or read the story or watched the story and suddenly you had a huge aha moment. Okay, let's keep going forward here. There's a method to my madness. We're gonna have you set that, the, that story that you wrote about um, aside for just a moment. And I wanna tell you why we focus on short stories here at Paddle Love. The reason we show, focus on getting you to be able to tell a short story in two to five minutes is that when you're working in advocacy, you often have an opportunity to tell a story but only in a very limited amount of time. So you might be at a legislative session, you might be in an important meeting where there's dozens of people, you might be at a city council session, you might write a blog, you might, might do an email newsletter, a media interview and more. For all of these purposes, a very short story is what's gonna work best for you. And it's not overwhelming to learn a short story. Imagine if I started us off and said, okay, um, the task is going to be at the end of the year, we want you to be able to tell a story in just an hour and a half. Imagine, imagine what a heavy lift that would feel like. But if I'm telling you a two to three minute, a two to five minute story, you're like, you know, I can wrap my head around that. Maybe I can do that. So that's why we focus on that at Petal Love. Now, I want you to write down, you can share this in the text, but this is one of the uh, writing exercises. Right now, I want you to take a couple of minutes and I want you to think about what your storytelling goals are as you come into this time with us. And I want you to think about what, what do you want to do with stories, let's say over the next month or maybe for October for Pedestrian Safety Awareness Month or for November, at the end of November, we have World Day of Remembrance for uh, victims of traffic crashes. So let's just take three minutes right now. And I want you to think about and write down for yourself what goals you have for each of these. You may never have thought of th this before. You may have come in this already prepared because you saw my email. You don't have to share this with anybody else, but I want you to leave here feeling much clearer about your goals for storytelling. So again, what do you think in the next 30 days could happen, October, or this fall for some, some, maybe you have some other event that's coming up for your organization, or maybe you're gonna be talking to a parent and teachers association. You're gonna be talking to city council, something like that, that you're like, you know what? If I, if I had a short story ready, I could really move the dial in some ways that I haven't before. So take some time right now. And if you feel game, Trini and I would really like to see what your answers are. So you, no pressure. But <laughs> we would love it if you want to share what some of your what some of your responses are for this. Well, for number one, I wrote that I want to change someone's opinion about what safety means on our roads. Then for pedestrian safety month, and it seems like a cop out, but it's true, I want to raise awareness about the safe systems approach. So I want people to understand what the basic principles about the safe systems approach um, are and how they apply to our everyday life. Um, then for the World Day of Remembrance, um, we've been trying to change policy around here regarding the hands-free um, devices so or a phone so it has to be mandatory that if you're going to use the phone at all you have to use it hands-free so we're drafting some legislation around that and hopefully that's going to be my conversation surrounding the world day of remembrance that will be my act so. beautiful so we're not going to have time for others to share right now but if you would like to talk about this at the end and maybe brainstorm a little bit about your strategy, we would love it. And that's the reason why I'm not asking people again to comment now is because I want to keep us really on time. So we have as much time as possible for you to have a conversation about this. So that is fantastic. And it gave us 
really concrete ideas about that. So we just have 30 seconds. If you haven't written things down, what Trini wrote or shared might inspire you. So go ahead and jot that down really quickly. And again, save it for us later if you haven't texted and shared with us, because this is something we can talk about a little bit later. Okay, that is our time for that. So we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into the science of storytelling, the structure of, of successful stories, and then we're gonna have you just get your toe in the water with starting your storytelling um, approach. So I could talk for an hour about the science of storytelling and I could really nerd out on you, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna just share some tidbits with you that I think you're gonna find really interesting. And I also wanna let you know that all of these things that I have up here are in the handout that you're gonna get about 15 minutes after we end today. It's in my PDF download, um, the, the Advocate Story Map. So everything is here for you, you can understand it. But basically storytelling breeds compassion and it's through mirroring and neurocoupling hormones and neurotransmitters. They have literally done the research on it. A, a guy named Paul Zak and his team basically studied what happened to people's blood when they were reading compelling stories and it changes things. So stories literally change brain chemistry, but they have to hit particular structure of well-known stories. So the modern science meets the ancient art of storytelling. The one thing I do want to go in a little bit deeper is dopamine, just as an example. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And what dopamine does is dopamine is released when you're reading, watching, or listening to a compelling story. And dopamine is the reason why you can binge watch your favorite television show all weekend long and feel like you accomplished something, or you stay up all night reading that that thrilling novel that you just can't wait to get to the end of. So dopamine is the reason that people feel like they are participating rather than simply observing when they're listening, watching, or or hearing a or uh, reading a compelling story. And dopamine does another thing. Our brains are literally wired for story. So if I asked you what your favorite story was when you were 10, you can probably tell me that story, right? If I asked you for some statistics that you learned um, a couple of weeks ago, you might remember one, but you're not going to remember the rest of it. So dopamine means that we remember information that is given in the shape of a story. So statistics are very in, important. Data is very important. But if you wrap the data in a story to demonstrate and illustrate it, people will have an easier time remembering it. Now, our goal with all of our storytelling is something called narrative transportation. And this is an incredibly wonky term. And I promise you, a traffic engineer did not come up with this term. I did not make this up. This is a real term. Sometimes they refer to it simply as transportation. But this is what it means is when you encounter a really compelling story, you get lost in the story. So narrative transportation means that people don't look at their phones when you're giving your presentation or your talk. They don't leave the conference room early. They don't leave your presentation online because they are so they can't wait to find out what happens next because you have transported them into the story. They feel like a participant. And here's the thing about narrative transportation. The more people are transported by your story, the more likely it is they will have an aha moment, change their mind, and see the world through your eyes. This is where the empathy comes in. So it's when you've really entertained them, you can also have a much better chance of changing their mind. Now, we can be upset about this, or we can start to recognize this is how human beings are. We're kind of selfish. And we can start becoming compelling, interesting storytellers 
to really move the dial for creating safe streets. So this is narrative transportation. They've, they've done the research on it. This is what opens hearts and changes minds and helps people see the world differently. And when they see the world differently, you're far more likely to get them to act to support your cause. So the tool that I use is called a simplified hero's journey. And this kind of rubs some people the wrong way because they feel like it's too grandiose or they feel like I'm not a hero in my life. I don't know what, why you would say that. But here's the thing about a hero's journey. It is the most popular story type of all time throughout history around the world. And this was researched by Professor Joseph Campbell in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which was made famous because George Lucas used it to help him craft the Star Wars empire of, of movies. And now Hollywood uses it for many things. They've taken it a little bit too literal about hero's journey and made it a superhero, but hero's journeys are actually important because they're about transformation and they're about internal transformation as much or even more so than external transformation. So all of us have had hero's journey stories in our lives and hero's journeys are not about winning. So you might've had a terrible crash and you could say, I'm not a hero, you're here, you're a hero. And even if someone has passed, they were a hero, their life mattered. So hero's journeys, again, they're about transformation. And by sharing these transformations that are internal, we can get other people to change their mind about what we've been through and see the world through our lenses. This is Lisa Cron, who's a fantastic storytelling coach. And she shares that the stories that we love the stories we pay attention to, the stories that we read over and over again or watch over and over again are about internal challenges and struggles. They're not just about external challenges and struggles. So all of us have had internal challenges and struggles as we've worked in advocacy. You, you can't be in advocacy for 10 minutes and not have an internal struggle because it's a whole different world. It's a whole different world with very different rules. So I want you to take out your paper again now. We're gonna take a couple of minutes and we're going to have you think about how you've been transformed internally because of your story that you're thinking about that you want to use to craft during these classes. And I want you to think about also, what's your struggle and overcoming? And the thing about struggle and overcoming is that again, it's not about winning. It's about a shift that you had in your attitude. It's about an aha moment where you realized that um, you were gonna have to approach things differently. So let's take, for example, you and your, friends or your colleagues decided that you want a um, new crosswalk put in, an actual crosswalk put in in front of a school, and you are, you went to the city council and you raised the funds and all these kinds of things, and it took you months to make this all happen, and then the city council says, mm, no, we don't actually think that needs to happen here, or they didn't even get to your, your subject because they had too many other things. We've all been through things like that. So you didn't lose, that wasn't, you learned something by sitting there and listening to them. You learned maybe if you got to speak and they didn't respond well to it, but some of them did, you learned something, you shifted your strategy because of that. So things that failed often are the things that we learned from the most. So a struggle in overcoming isn't a struggle and a win, it's, what did you have something really hard to deal with? And then you learned how to better the next time. So that's kind of your overcoming. So how have you been transformed and what was the struggle and overcoming that you've dealt with? So jot those down, because we're gonna come back to those and we're going to have people share about those if they feel like it um, at the end. But this is really important for your story because it's in 
your transformation that you share authentically and your struggle in overcoming that other people get an opportunity to see the world through your eyes and see that flip happen and that flip cap could happen for them. It could be somebody who drives everywhere and thought that speeding was okay because they were a safe driver. And you might've been that person too. And, and you realize, no, it really, speed limits are for a reason, right? It could be that you started riding a bike and suddenly realized or started walking your kids to school and started to realize, oh, there's a reason why we don't need to be creeping into a, um, a crosswalk with our cars while people are still in it. All these things that happen to us are opportunities for other people to see their world anew through your eyes. So take a minute to just jot those down. It may not be the one that you stick with, but it'll get you used to thinking about it. We just have about 30 seconds here. We're gonna have you wrap that up and move on. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about how to actually map your story because science proves to us that these well-crafted, particularly crafted stories are what open hearts and changed minds. So what the heck is the structure of that? Stories need shape and structure, but what do I mean? For our purposes, we're gonna use a triangle or a pyramid. And your stories always need to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, or they're not a story. And again, all of these steps, take notes, because that's going to help you remember things. But all of these steps, everything I share with you today is also in the handout. So don't worry about it if you don't think you have it, you've written it down quite right. So there's something called the three-act structure, or Freytag's pyramid. So this was a German philosopher and poet who studied the stories that people at that time in the 17, 18, early 1800s, most beloved stories, he studied Shakespeare and the Greek tragedies. Why, why did they stand the test of time at that time? And he came up with this five step structure. And that's the one that I'm going to teach you. But what we're gonna to learn today is the most important thing when you're starting to tell a story. We're gonna to talk today about setting your intentions for your story. So as you move into choosing a story, focusing on a story, you always start with your purpose and your intentions so that at the end, it does what you want it to start out with. Part two, in um, early September, we're gonna go into the step-by-step -step story map. And then part three, we're going to have you polish and strategize this. So you are gonna be able to take bite size, choose all along to get your story exactly where you want it to be for this fall. So what's your purpose? As you're thinking about, remember we, we had you talk about your goals. So what's your purpose in telling the particular story that you wanna tell? And Trini had some very, she had a few different ones. So she might decide that she wants one story for three purposes, but she might want to, another reason that you can, you want to use short stories is they're very flexible. So you might want to emphasize a, something a little bit differently each time you tell it, depending on the audience. So what's your purpose? So write that down right now. What's your purpose in telling this story? Now here's a big one, and this one's tough. What's in it for your audience? This is also something that you can be flexible with because your audience is gonna change, right? Your email newsletter list, your social media list, there's, those are your fans and followers. But what if you're going to go to the city council or legislative session or a parent and teachers association or another kind of business organization that you want to sponsor you or whatever it is? You want WIIFM, what's in it for you? For me, 
what's in it, meaning what's in it for your audience. You need to meet your audience where they are right now and bring them along with you. And that is, that is tough, especially if you've had something really bad happen to you, but people can't relate easily to hard things. They need to have some familiarity about it for them. So let's say, let's take for example that maybe you're meeting with a parent and teachers association. You can start with the fact that either you're all parents or you all care deeply about children not getting run over. So that's a place that you can start. We can all agree that that the the health and well-being of children is paramount to us. Did you know it's the second leading cause of death of children in the United States? car crashes. And I remember when my mother was still alive, I told her that and she was like, what? Excuse me? And all of a sudden, because she had grandchildren, she was ready to listen to me when before it was like, yeah. So <laughs> that's why we want to have what's in it for them. What's in it for this particular audience? So go ahead and write that down as well. What's in it for this audience that you have in mind and how how might you, you don't have to have it completely figured out, but start thinking about how could you meet them with some language, some energy right where they are. And then remember we talked about struggle and overcoming. So I'd asked you before what your struggle and overcoming is. If you're thinking about it, let's bring it up again. If you hadn't written it down yet, Let's go into this a little bit deeper. Why is it struggle and overcoming? Why am I not just telling you to share your struggle? This term is one that I learned from the best-selling author, Carmine Gallo of Talk Like Ted. He is a wonderful speaker. And he said, basically, human beings are selfish. And we can't, this is how we survive. We cannot take in very much that's really horrible. We just shut down, especially if it doesn't have anything to do with us. So when you're telling a story that has a tough situation in it, you wanna share the struggle and the overcoming to balance it. Share too much struggle, people shut down. Share only overcoming and you're bragging. So you wanna do the Goldilocks and the three bears. You wanna find a story, the porridge, that's just the right temperature. And this is where having other people give you feedback about your story really helps because it's really hard when it's just you telling your story. You need to get feedback from other people if you're hitting the right mark for these different audiences. So write down again, struggle and overcoming and how you could balance it. So remember the overcoming isn't winning. You didn't get the protected bike lanes in yet necessarily. You didn't necessarily uh, get your public works director to um, go after a safe uh, roads for all grant, but you 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 got some something a better understanding of how to do this. And how are you going to reach narrative transportation? So you're thinking about your story. You're thinking about where you're going to tell your story. You might not be telling your story in a legislative session. You might be doing this on social media. So you might want to tape a selfie video or it might be done in pictures or it could be an audio file. You could put it on SoundCloud or it is part of a presentation but it's part of a larger presentation and you want to make sure that now that you know about storytelling, you're going to approach your whole presentation differently. So think about, start thinking about right away, how will you reach narrative transportation? And part of the reason why we're going to take a whole year to do this is it's not easy to be a great storyteller. Anyone can become a masterful storyteller if you care about it. But I, so for those of you who have been to the National Bike Summit, like myself, uh, you will notice that a lot of people are doing their presentations in the hall right before they walk on stage. Now me as a trained Toastmaster was like, what? We're last minute Lucy's. I'm gonna ask everybody for 
recognize that your story is going to be a work in progress. Recognize that you're going to take baby steps and bite-sized shoes towards becoming a better storyteller. But recognize that you could have one story that you tell for the next five years and you could keep polishing it and perfecting it and flexing it here and there for different audiences to really get it right. Because it's like a performance piece. And think about this, when actors do a play, they memorize the lines. Now, everybody has been to a presentation where somebody just memorized their presentation and it was really boring, but they got it to the letter. That's not what you wanna do. The actors are memorizing their lines so that they know it so well that they can then live the emotion. The people that are great at acting are great at their facial expressions, their body movements, their energy is infectious. And we want to be a part of it because of how they present it. So the how is just as important as the what. We will get more into that in the next two classes, but I wanted to touch on that today because it's really, really super important. So we've got one more exercise as we round up today and then we're gonna go into conversation. So this is what we were talking about already. So if you haven't taken a minute already to write these down, go ahead and write them down for yourself right now. Let's just take a minute and do that. What's the purpose in telling your story? What's in it for your audience? Where are you gonna meet them right where they are? What's a struggle in overcoming that you wanna share? And how will you work on reaching narrative transportation? Now, you may not have the answers to any of these yet, and that's okay, but it's something to start thinking about. And you might wanna share one of these with us because now we're just about to switch it over for a conversation. So think about if there's one of these that you want clarification on, you have a question for me about, I haven't been clear, or you just wanna talk about it because you're like, oh, I get it. I understand why this would be important. So let's give that 30 more seconds. Write it down. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can actually see you guys. And we're going to have time for some conversation. And you can go ahead and unmute yourselves. So do you wanna raise your hand? And okay, the only thing I'm gonna to ask today is remember that we've got a number of other people here with us. So if you have something you wanna talk about, try and be brief if you can, um, because there's a lot of important topics here and we want everybody who wants to share something or wants something clarified to have an opportunity to have that done. So is some, does somebody have their hand raised that they would like to ask a question or they have something they wanna share? Suzanne, there you are, my friend. How are you? Take yourself off mute. Hi, very well, thanks. All right. I do have a question because I heard you say something like, uh, even if all you did was survive a crash, you are still here. And indeed I am, but what that's not super dramatic. Yeah, I'm here and I've been pushing this stuff for 30 years. And here we still are. Um, what my question is, is must it be my story, which is ongoing, or could it be a more moving story of a bicyclist and advocate in Phoenix who was hit by a car, lingered for a while, passed away. As a result, there is some improved infrastructure in our area on the road where he passed. 
okay, thanks. Um, but there's more work to be done. Can it be that story? Yes, yes. Okay. So um, I want to say to the advocates here who want to tell other people's story, yes, you can. I just want to make sure, and I know you, of course, you know this, but um, make sure you have permission to tell the story. And there are going to be people who, and part of the reason that we wanted to get this network of people together where there's both advocates and survivors um, is that um, some people may never want to tell their story or, or they've passed and so they cannot tell their story. And so they may want to participate in the crafting of the story, but they want the advocate to tell it. So that is a really, thank you so much for bringing up this point. Just make sure that you have the um, permission to tell the story and if you can, if the person is still with us, craft the story with them. And there might be some, like, for example, they might want to write a blog about it, but they don't want to get up and tell it. So that, that is an absolutely fantastic question. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here and doing this work for so many years. We need it. We need you. Thank you. Thank you. So who else has a question that they would like, or if they have something they want to share about maybe an aha moment about... Uh, storytelling and what it means. And just know that I have no qualms about calling on you if I don't see you raise your hand. So, <laughs> so, so I'll use that better. Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead, please. Sorry, I guess I better raise my hand and get to talking. I guess when I tell my story, by the way, I'm a crash survivor and I'm an advocate and that's what prompted me into advocacy work. But I don't, I'm gonna cry. I don't, I don't, I don't tell my story like what everything that happened because we even went to court and it ended horribly. And I wish I knew what I know today as far as, wow, I could have got Brad Tucker involved or should have gone to the website that told me not to open my mouth with the insurance company, you know, who, of the gal who hit me. And um, the other thing is, you know what? I got up and walked away from it. I'm pretty damn lucky. I'm an advocate because I don't want any more people killed on the roads. And I feel so strongly about that. I feel like I need to tell their story. Mine's pretty mediocre, but when I tell my story, I just, I'm still mad. I'm still mad and I have to tell you, I'm, I'm fueled a lot by anger. I'm working, right now I'm working uh, really hard to get the cops in my neighborhood in my community to start taking the VRU law seriously, as well as the three feet to pass law. By the way, I had to provide the statute for them because I, I was harassed by a police who came to my house to respond to a, uh, a buzzing, a near miss um, that happened to me. And I got it on film because anymore it's our words against theirs. And so anyways, I, I, I'll be quiet, but I'm just saying, I, I I am going to have to tell my story at some point because I'm I'm tired of it. But I I have to say I I tend to I've had given a few talks or speeches in front of county commissioners and council, and I I, I tell other people's stories, just what's in the news, you know. But um, yeah, I, this is something that still stings for me. It happened 2014, and. I mean, I get up every day and th that's that's what still fills me. But I guess I just need to kind of sort through how I'm gonna how I'm gonna say it, how I'm gonna tell it. So Hopefully we've given you some, some questions to start mm -hmm. you on that journey. And thank you for your courage every day of taking this on and getting to, it, it takes a while to get ready to tell your story. It really, really does. Thank you very, very much for sharing that and for being here with us today. Thank you. Thrilled to have you here. Thank you. Who else has a question or a comment about um, something that they realized about telling a story? Uh, like you didn't understand why, why it isn't easier, why people don't, don't listen. Something that you're like, oh, that, yeah, Trini, please. So um, this past legislative session, I went and testified on behalf of SB 23200, which was the Automated Traffic Enforcement Bill. The first, it's the first time that I was asked by the city of Boulder to go and testify. So when I was drafting what I was going to say, what, you know, I focused on basically the things that I had been doing. And I just like, 
brushed over the crash and all of the things that that implied for me as far as how I felt and all of the emotional part of it. And I thought that that was going to make things more compelling in a way. I do not know why, but I thought that. So I went before the Senate and, you know, the reaction was, well, thank you so much for being here, Ms. Willard. And, you know, goodbye. And I really felt like a little bit, not, not dismissed to a degree, but I felt like, oh my gosh. I mean, I remember the last time I testified, people were crying and they don't seem to care, you know? And anyway, I mean, not that that, it it was just like this very aha moment because then I said, right, okay. because you, you thought I've got my game together. I'm going to go after them with data. They're going to care. They could care less. Right. It's like, they want to feel. So we have this, uh, we have this idea that we are um, rational beings and we're not, none of us are rational. We make up our mind and then we support our, what we feel in our heart with the data that we find. Some of us are just better at it than others, but um, this is really, and this is the first, uh, one of the first things that my husband, Charlie, uh, taught me was that people, you know, make up their minds with their hearts and then they, they find the newspaper, they find the information uh, to support that. It doesn't matter who they are. So we've got to go for the heart because that's actually what those stony faced senators and council people um, care about. And, you know, and I, I, just so to like yeah. to confirm that this is a fact, I mean, then I had the opportunity to go before the house and I did the complete opposite and people were crying. They were thanking me. They were, it was like, you know, nothing changed between these two weeks, except for what I'm sharing, you know? So it was very, very, it was really that, cool. That, and that's really, you know, you opened hearts and changed minds because you told a story, right? And they could, they could participate. And I know it is really hard to hear that people don't care if we don't touch their hearts, but that unfortunately is the way it is. Preston, you have your hand up. Back in 2001, if you can remember that far back, we went before the state legislature to try to pass the Matthew Brown Act. Matthew Brown was a young man riding his bike, uh, got run over by a truck and died. And we had all the statistics, we had all the stuff. I'm backing up Trini's story. Uh, <clears throat> my background's an engineer, so I mean, you know, I'm I'm gonna give you statistics. Matthew's mother came in to testify, told Matthew's story. And one of the chief opponents to our bill said at the end of this process don't take on the cyclists and it was all because matthew's mother stood up and talked about her son and his story and all of the all the rest of that was just blow it away let's do it we passed in one session in the texas legislature five out of seven things that we had in that bill and that's unheard of and that's where we got the, you know, the the passing rules and the 14 foot lane. And we got all those kind of things done in 2001. And here we are 22 years later, still living with those changes. We got them done because she stood up and spoke a story. And she told a story that, you know, uh, when I was a young person, uh, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers was launched. And we, uh, we, it's become a very different organization today than it was originally, but it was originally one woman's grief over the loss of her daughter and her ability to tell that story. And um, at the time, um, it, for those of you who weren't old enough to remember, driving drunk was just a thing that people did. And, um, and she changed the face of that. And so I, I have faith that we as, um, as uh, people who care can change the culture, but we need a cadre of storytellers and we need well-trained storytellers <clears throat> that can get up and tell engaging, compelling stories that um, will flip scripts. And that is, you know, we have the all power for bike lobby uh, that the bike uh, bicyclists laugh about because um, we, uh, we've punched uh, above our weight uh, in a lot of ways, um, but 
here's the thing, and Trina and I were talking about this today. We will not, we will not create, or we will not reverse climate change without safe streets. And both of these situations have the same problem. And that is very smart, very dedicated people have come at it with data, trying to get city engineers and city planners and mayors to care. In some cases, it's the media to care talked about the gloom and doom, talked about the terrible, terrible statistics and rising death and serious injury. And we live in a time of short attention span theater where people are just moved on to the next thing and they don't care. And this is one of the most important things that people could do to affect climate change in their community is to slow down and create safe streets. So whatever angle that you wanna come at this from, you can come at this from whatever works for you, but just know that the climate people haven't had any better luck and, and the media talks about gloom and doom. So what we're gonna talk about next time um, in September is a concept that I wanna kind of tickle your fancy with here and that is solutions storytelling. And so not only are we um, engaged in helping you to become compelling, memorable storytellers, we want you to become solutions storytellers. So it's not enough to raise awareness because the city councils and the legislators will be like, ah, yeah, well that, thank you very much. But you have to come in this, uh, Preston, you'll know, my husband, Charlie taught me, it's the first thing you've got to come with a solution. And they may not take your crosswalk design, they may not take your protected bike lane, your camera pro program or vendor, but if you have the solution, they have something to respond with and tweak and move forward with. So as we um, come to the end of our time today, I'm happy to stay here and answer some more questions or have the you guys talk amongst yourself, but I know a lot of people have other places to be, so I wanna be right on time. I want you to think about the topic of being a solutions storyteller. It will be in the handout that I send you. Um, I've got it set up to go out in about 15 minutes. So everything is there. And then we're gonna ask you to come back and bring some of your friends in September on September 7th. We're gonna go step-by-step step through exactly how you do this compelling story. But the intention, as Trini laid out, exactly all the things that she's got on her plate for this fall that they're working on with It Could Be Me. That's exactly how we want each of you to be thinking. Charlie calls it the lay down, stretch and visionary goal. So you wanna think about what's the thing you could do this month? This month you could sign up. You could sign up to be a part of our sel selfie story challenge. You could make sure you're gonna be at our next class. You could get people together at your organization and say, I'm learning about storytelling and I wanna know, does anybody else wanna learn? And could we, create a safe culture for people to not feel shamed or feel judged to tell their story. Could that happen with us? So you will get more emails from me with more details. I'm very tenacious. <laughs> so for those of you who've been on my email newsletter list for years, I'm super tenacious. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited to have you here. Anybody wanna share some final thoughts? I just want to say it certainly got me thinking, and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's the best I can. That's the best we could hope for. Absolutely. Does anybody else want to have some um, final thoughts, Trini? I want to give you the last word. If nobody else has anything they want to share with us tonight, I was just typing. I was just thanking everybody for being here, and you, Melissa, for a great class. And we need you guys, so please come next September. And, you know, let's all get better at storytelling because our stories are going to change the world and make our road safe. So. Absolutely. Yay. So if you're interested and you haven't already said uh, in the text box whether or not you want to be participating in an ongoing storytelling project, kind of as a part of but beyond the um, year long classes, please go ahead and write that down. And I know how to get in touch with you, but I don't want to assume anything. So. Write that down if you want to you want to participate, and 
uh, you might want to participate with your organization. And if you enjoyed this and you want to see us be able to offer this more robustly and in different ways, please give us a testimonial. This means a lot to us. Trini and I are brainstorming on some ideas, but it means a lot to us if you could share in the text, if this meant something to you, tell us who you are, how, how it has you thinking, um, because uh, there are some opportunities for grant writing and things like that, that we would like to go after. And the testimonials are some of the biggest way that we can get people to, to uh, say yes to uh, helping us raise money. And I want to, if you saw somebody that has a story that resonates with you, when, I'm gonna leave this open for about 10 minutes, go ahead and send them a private message. If you wanna just say, so I support you, would you like to be in contact um, on our own? Um, beyond what we're doing. This is about building bridges between advocates and uh, people who have survived or are working to get their life back together. Some people don't like those terms because I know some, you're like every day, how am I gonna deal with this? Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I am thrilled with the group of people that showed up here. I couldn't appreciate you more. Trini, I couldn't appreciate you more. And I'm excited that we are starting on this storytelling project together. Thank you all very much. I'm gonna mute myself and let you guys um, Thanks, Melissa. That was really great. Uh, look forward to the future and the next sessions. What can I do to help? Um, let's talk. We'll talk soon. I'm sure Charlie would like to say hello. And uh, so I'll be in touch and, and we'll make that happen soon to, to connect. Thank you very, very much. I was delighted to see you here today. Thank you. Oh, she's left. Oh my God, I'm writing and she's gone. <laughs> oh no. Uh, okay. I'm still here. Sorry. Okay. I, I, my yeah. children are screaming in the background. So I oh no, no watching. worries. Uh, yes, I'm going to share this uh, this this uh, deck with uh, Trini and it can, I, and I, Trini, I'll send you the large version and the short, the small version, and you can share that. Also, we have the recording, which I'm going to stop right now.